Hi, welcome to Create with Maya. I'm Maya, I just woke up, so I'm not looking like the fanciest in the world. Um, but I got my whale leggings on, I got my little shell thing, cause it's cold, and I got my sponge, my paint knife, my primary colors, and this. Now you can definitely cheap, as I'm going to later on probably, um, and get some colors outside of your primary. Yes. That's my cat, excuse her, she does not like this, she's not a part of this right now. Um, but um, we can use some substitute colors to uh, kind of make up for the fact that we don't necessarily want to mix all of the time. But I did mix up our initial colors. So if you can see, and you probably can't see very well because my I don't clean my palettes very well, um, but there's this green color I just mixed. We got this orange, we got this red, we got this yellow, we got this purple, and we got this blue. So what we're gonna do today is treated grounds. As you can see in the time lapse, treated grounds kind of can be just a background for something or it can be the abstract piece itself. We're gonna be making a rainbow treated ground to start. Um, and then we're gonna move on to another panel and do a different kind of treated ground. All of these are based in our color harmonies, um, but it's kind of given your own twist to it and you can definitely switch up the colors. You're gonna need your clean water because you're working with a sponge and you're gonna need a rag. Um, it's gonna get messy, friends, which means I might have to take off the film because it's gonna be a little messy. So, here's how we start. We're basically going to start um, with the red at the beginning of our color harmony. I'm gonna try to show it as best I can. And you just need to do a little dab, nothing too crazy. And then you clean off your sponge in your clean water. Make sure it's so clean that you feel comfortable putting your whole hand in it. <laughs> she misses me so much. Um, okay, and I literally, she's been in there for like, three minutes and she doesn't like it. Okay, so the second thing we're gonna do is use our orange and kind of do the same thing on the outskirts. I'm coming, Bean, I'm coming. So, not a big difference, pretty much. Clean off your, clean off your sponge again. And we're gonna do that for all the colors of the rainbow. So we're gonna move into our yellow. in the room right now is because she likes to eat paint. I don't know if any of you have a cat, 
but my cat likes to eat paint. And Lord, it is hard to be an artist and have a cat who likes to eat paint. I can't let her eat paint. I just can't. I can't. It hurts my soul. I can't. I can't let it happen. Alright, so after the <laughs> we're gonna do blue. I love skirts. I'm sorry. I hear you. She's like, just so you hear my complaints. I'm like, I hear you. You're heard me. I'm literally artist life. Okay, so clean off your sponge again after your blue. Make sure you're going in, back in, and blending every time. Don't even have to do too much blending to make it look kind of real. And then what I just did before to make it blend is take the flat side of your sponge, smooth it over. Just a little, just a little. Not too much to where you're blending the colors and make sure that you're cleaning it if you're switching the sides of the sponge. There we go. All right, now we're gonna take our purple. Always make sure you get the sides of the canvas whenever you're doing anything. So whether or not this is a treated ground, you're going to get your sides of the canvas because it adds dimension. I treated ground and you know you can go back in and blend it with a dry sponge if you want to um, I personally like it when it looks kind of you know homemade like this but yeah that's our first activity we'll move on to the second and just one more and we'll let it dry my name is Gerald King Gerald G. Rod King is what they call me um, <laughs> And I am a commercial designer. I am a graphic designer. Uh, I do TV production. Uh, I have two television shows in Battle Creek, Michigan, and I want to bring one here back to Kalamazoo. Uh, I graduated from Kalamazoo Central in 1995, and, and I was voted most artistic, <laughs> believe that or not. And for the last, for the last like, I want to say a year and a half to two years, I've been doing a lot of mirror work, um, a lot more than I have in the, in the previous years. Um, and I'm getting into different forms of art, like uh, welding, poetry, and just things I've never done previously. So that's where I am right now. Um, so my second question is what kind of an artist are you? And like by this I mean like, I know that we're all artists, but like what do you think is like the signature of your work? Like when you see your work, what kind would you say it is, you know? Uh, um, well depending on what I work on, I like to, um, a lot of my work is, uh, I work with a lot of dark colors. I like to, um. I like to work the things that, uh, like if I'm doing like figure drawing or stuff like that, I usually work with like graphite. Well, I started off working with graphite, so 
and graphite and charcoal. Yeah. I start off with that, and then um, if I am working on things in color, because when I was growing up, I never liked to use colors because I hated those watercolors that they gave us in school. Mm -hmm. They would always make my, I would use too much water and make the paper all nasty and I, I never could get the colors right. But as I got older and I learned color theory and I learned about, you know, uh, primary colors, secondary colors and um, monochromatic. When I, when I learned all that stuff, I started to look at it differently. But a lot of, um, a lot of my work is, um, I don't, I don't really have a style, but I, a lot of my work can be identified by its, um, its boldness. Or some people say darkness, but you know you can do boldness in different ways. Mm -hmm. But um, that's that's one thing I can say that that's consistent in all the work that I do. It's either something really bold, or it's something that um, the statement is bold. You know. What do you, uh, like? What would you say? Um, what kind of art? What kind of artist are you like when it comes to subject matter? You know, like when it comes to like the kind of works that you're doing, like, and also, what do you want to like communicate to your audience through your work? Uh, I try to tell a story through the um, through the work without without necessarily using the words. I like the audience to kind of come up with their own um, idea of what the picture is. Mm -hmm. uh, for for one example, I did a I did a piece when I was in college, and it was called Nation Flakes. And I just took a I just took a a cereal box and I poured some cereal into a bowl and I took a picture of it. I took that picture and I sketched that picture out. But instead of keeping the marshmallows in the cereal, I changed those marshmallows to uh, symbols in society, uh, a swastika. Um, one was an Apple logo. The other marshmallow was a um, uh, I think it was a Jordan logo. You know what I'm saying? Just different symbols that we see. Mm -hmm. And I made those the marshmallows in the cereal, and I, you know, I we had an art project to do, and I made a big, big wall display of it. And as as people walked by and they looked at it, it was like so many people got a different interpretation of what I meant when I drew that or when I sketched it. I would just talk. I called it nation flakes because these were symbols that we worship. These were basically secret societies in our society, which is the bowl of cereal. But some people came by and they said it, it, oh, well, I think it represents a woman and her having babies. And yeah. I, I think then some people were like, well, I think it represents America. Some people thought it represents the earth. You know, all these different yeah. people, depending on your background or where you come from, you had a different concept on what you're looking at. And that's, that's what I love about art. That's what I think, um, I think I shine the most when I do that type of artwork. And, but I love it all though, you know, I, I think it all, I think it all has a place in society. And I think, I think we need more artists in politics. Yeah. I think we're more creative. I think we're less likely to be um, divisive. I think we have a more open mind. Um, I, and I think we're just more inclusive. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's just how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, you talk about symbolism in your work and I see that like through your work and what you do because like that's that's why I got you in on this like right, right. Um, project I thought like you know Nicole and Gerald's work is really um really definitive through color and just like mine is like through color we work in color a lot so like I feel like especially when we were doing that project at the Lacrome Park mural um that that we were able to work better together because we could have that translation through color. Mm -hmm. Could you hand me that water bottle real quick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, on top oh, of, there, there you go. Stop it. <laughs> not playing this time. <laughs> like, I don't want to play. She's a baby. I understand, but I don't want to play anymore. Um, but, okay, so yeah, uh, I feel like, how does, like, do you think color can be a symbol? And, like, how do you use color as a symbol if you think it can be used as a symbol, you know? Uh, well, well, like I said, I like the bold colors, um, mm -hmm. darker colors, uh, because, I, you know, when I'm working with, I'm working on regular white paper. Um, and one of, my, one of my teachers always said, if you want to make a statement, like a big, bold statement, either draw something real big or make it real red. Mm -hmm. Because... 
when I when I use the color when I use colors like red, it um it can be used as a dark color, it can be used as a light color. Um, people identify with both love and people identify with hate. If you ask a person what color represents love, they'll write red. If you ask them what represents hate, they'll write red. Like this. Yep. <laughs> and sometimes and I, I learned that and for one whole month I did an experiment. I just used my red my red um ink on my all my red markers, I use all my red um, ink pens, and I use all my red paint the whole month. I just painted it in red, and I tried to, um, and I tried to see if I can make this one color light and dark, you know, with color placement, with placement on the paper, just you know, using different yeah. techniques. And I learned, I learned a lot doing that, and and I just went through and I did all the colors like that. One, because you know, green is my favorite color, uh, like a light lime green. That's my birthstone. And you, you'll see that a lot in my, when I, when I start to do my comic book work, I use a lot of light line greens. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use magic and stuff like that, you know, like something exploding. And, and uh, I like to use that color a lot too. Um, bright yellows, um, bright reds. Like I said, for, for a sunset, I never make a sun yellow. It's always red. And that... I, it's just something I do. It's just, you know, every artist got their own little thing. I think it's bolder, stands out more. I'll make the sky yellow and make the sun red. It's See, like, I do yeah. the opposite when I'm working. Like, I'll do, like, a big yellow sun and then a big red the sky. Red sky. So yeah, like, so. <laughs> it'll be like, but it's st the, still kind of the same the balance, thing because you're yeah. messing with color, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you're messing with, like, boldness. And yeah. Like, and, um, a lot of, and a lot of my teachers, they didn't, um, a lot of my art teachers didn't like um, color symmetry. Like my teacher, she was always like, "I hate one color just in the middle of the page. Like, don't do, don't make nothing symmetrical. Where you can split the paper in half and you get everything on one side." Mm -hmm. She always told me to, you know, mess it up a little bit. Like, you know, um, don't stand in front of a picture. You know, like maybe lay down and look at it at a different angle. And, and and in life, you you know, you do that. See things at different angles. We were um, just talking about that last yeah, week. So we were yeah. talking about. Um, Focal points, right? Like horizon lines and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and it all depends. Like I said, when I was growing up, I hated using colors because I, I didn't know how, mm -hmm. and so I just stuck to my graphite. But that kind of got boring looking at those grays and all the time. And then I got to doing chalk work, and I learned about um, you know cameras and Fifty Shades of Gray when I started doing photography. Mm -hmm. And I and one thing I did too, and one thing I think makes me unique is I use my photography. As a, most photographers are real, like, you know, they're real technical and, they, you know, take the picture like this and all that. I don't do that. I just take the picture. If I'm going to draw something later, I just take a picture of it. I'm going to draw it later. You know, um, I'm not necessarily going to make it look real. It's gonna, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but a lot of photographers are like that. But I like to use my photography as a, a starting off point to the artwork. Whereas most people will take a picture of a pic, uh, painting or something like that. I, I will try to do the reverse, you know, and that, that's just the way my mind works. And I think I come out, my work comes out best when I do it like that. So, yeah. For yeah. sure. There's a lot to be said about that, but I want to move on to the next uh, yeah, question. Yeah. So, um, oh, mm -hmm. how long have you been working in the art business monetarily? The art business? Yes, as a uh, business. Like, As we're business? also talking about financial literacy through art. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. well, let me go back. Um, well, you know, first of all, I'm 43 years old. So when right. I say I go back, I'm going back. Right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, That's important. Yes, I'm going that. back. Um, my father is a very well-known photographer in Chicago, King Photography. He, um, he's been doing his thing for almost 50 years. I was always his apprentice. I was always around photography. He always took me to different, um, you know, Chicago has a lot of uh, museums and art places. They, you know, you know about the main museums, but they have a lot of like low key um, little places around the city that only certain people know about, photographers and artists know about. Mm -hmm. And um, my father used to take me to all these places. And I learned at an early age, I want to say I, I had to be like between five and eight years old. I learned how to work a camera. I learned how to um, how to shoot people. I learned how to um, I learned about senses of motion when you shoot somebody, and you know sometimes it's blurry because they move. And I learned how to you know get that to work for me. And I and I applied all that stuff to my artwork. 
you know, my father was an artist, but when he started to do photography, that made more money, so he stuck to that, you right. know, so... <laughs> And, well, and it's still the same thing. Some yeah. people have different mediums, you know. Like, right. And, like, photography is a really profitable medium if yes. you choose it, you mm -hmm. know, and if you choose it well. You know, so sometimes we, like, there, I mean, not everybody, like, I do a lot of different fields, like, a lot of different types of art, right? Right, like, right. Like, some people don't want to. Some people just want to, like, Stick to one thing, yeah. <laughs> that they get really, really good at, and then they right. can continue with it, which I understand, because, like, yeah. I, I also had to do that. I, like, grew up, like, writing music and like uh shoot like making films and stuff and mm -hmm. I, I was just trying to find my my passion like what what I love the most but, so I had to give myself a lot of uh, a lot of leeway like you know so I, 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 I dabbed in tv production when I when I first moved to Battle Creek from Kalamazoo um I moved there and I I kind of I didn't like living there I just kind of living there because I just met my wife and she lived there I wanted to get out of Kalamazoo because I kept getting pulled over by cops for no reason. Right. I couldn't walk up the street no more. I couldn't walk to my house. Cops were stopping me. I lost two jobs because of that. Um, and it was just, things were slow. Like, it, it was, I was in a bad shape when I first left. But as soon as I left, I got a job. I got two cars and I was going to college like within three months. And I became, I, I went to college for 3D animation. So when I took 3D animation, I took that and intro to art at the same time so I took beginning art and like this is the beginning art and this animation way over here yeah. I took both of them and you know people was like you should do that is you know you gotta but my basic art teacher the stuff that she the stuff I learned in that basic art class I had to go back to triangle squares mm -hmm. and circles like <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what I mean I had to go all the way back yeah and once she made me do that it made the animation class easier because she used to always tell me like, go from general to specific, go from simple forms to complicated forms. And I, I, I thought about that when I got to the animation class because guess what we had to make? We had to make a 3D square, a 3D mm -hmm. circle. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, this is what I learned in here. I'm gonna apply it to here. But, but in the animation class, it was more about using math as art. Yeah. Um, you know, the X, Y, and Zs, you had to, once you, you had to use that to form your shapes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these days the computer comes with that. So it's like, you can push open Apple C, make a circle, open Apple T, make a triangle. But you still have to know those dimensions. Right. Um, and I started to learn more about using, like, um, drafting programs. Because I, I never wanted to be an architect. I'd rather paint the walls. You can build them. I paint them. Because like, you know, <laughs> it just seemed boring to me. But once I started to learn that stuff, right. and I'm like, oh, wow, this is... You know, this is cool, but, so I just kept, I just kept learning. Like, I, I turned myself into a sponge when it came to art, and, and I, I started to apply those concepts in art to my life. Um, we talked that's about. That's what this show's about. Right. <laughs> and we talked about colorism a lot, and I think, um, now, now that you brought that up, I think earlier on, when I was growing up, uh, when I first got to Kalamazoo, I don't know if it still is, because I live somewhere else, but. Colorism was a, a bad problem here. Um, I went to school one time in junior high, and I, I was sitting at the table at lunch, and they told me not to sit there because I was dark-handed. And I never, you know, coming from Chicago, I never seen black-on-black -black racism. Right. I always seen, like, you know... I have a similar this, thing come from up north, yeah. Yeah, and, like, and people... Well, my, my mother called it color struck, meaning color struck. Right. You know, I'm, I'm only going to accept the light-skinned blacks or... I'm gonna look at dark skinned blacks a certain way and mm -hmm. maybe it'll make people think better of me. Like that that whole mentality and and I guess and like when I when I started to see heroes and stuff like that, I always looked up I was like, Well I'll reverse it then. I'm gonna look up to the dark skinned people and and I'm gonna shun the light skinned people. Then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm I'm reversing this same concept. Yeah. And, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had a weird kind of dynamic with that yeah. when I realized what colorism was and that it had favoritism and then i then i did that kind of same thing where i was like no we gotta find black people like we gotta yeah find yeah black people and, and then and then eventually you're just like but wait am i just like kind of limiting me right and and, and, and yeah. we are you know um and, and as i got older mm -hmm. um and I, I started to i started to work with different artists and some of the stuff like this and uh all these artists in my different college classes and i'm working with them and i'm seeing different people 
uh, different couples. Some people are, you know, gay, straight, mm -hmm. uh, light skinned, dark skinned, Irish, Italian, and we were all in the same classroom. It kind of, I kind of fell in love with diversity. I was like, I, I said, I need to have all of this because I can learn from all of y'all, and we can, y'all can learn from me because I know y'all can learn from me because I know some stuff. So it's like, experience, <laughs> experience, yeah. And so, but I noticed in a lot of when I got to college, because I started going to college like in, let's see, um, I didn't go right after high school. I graduated in 95. I waited till like the 2000s. So things were a little different. <laughs> and when I, when I got to the college class um, in Battle Creek, I noticed that for this to be the Underground Railroad, it was pretty segregated because I was only... I was only one or two black kids in my animation class, but in the art class, it was a bunch of us. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they, you know, they didn't want to take that extra step because animation and stuff, that ain't just the character design. That's one element of it. It's 62 other different elements. You got the sound, the music, the, you know, <laughs> all that stuff together. But doing animation, um, you have to combine every type of art into that uh, sound, um, Character design, um, lighting, you know, what's light, what's dark. Mm -hmm. You got to move it through the movie. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, you got to make a mouse seem like he got a personality like a human being. <laughs> and it, it, it's not easy. And, and then it's yeah. not just that. It's mm -hmm. like you were talking about this earlier, the structures of it all. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you have to move the face. It's that you have to move the foundation of the face, then you have to move the eyes in the face, then you have to move right. the nose in the face. So it all has to go together. Otherwise, it's going to be let's like say this scene, distorted. This, let's say this scene, this guy's frustrated. So his eyes going to do a certain thing. And yeah. If he's mad, his eyes going to do a certain thing. And, but and, his eyebrows have to be doing And you got somebody standing over you telling you, no, I don't want him to look mad no more. Make him look happy and jump this way. Mm -hmm. That's another, That might be another two, three months worth of work. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? And it, it could be frustrating. And the people you're working with, yeah. You got to be around them people, um, what, maybe two to four years working on this project where they might get on your nerves. So that is <laughs> like an unforgiving thing. And I mean, I'm going to mm -hmm. move on to another question after this, but like the financial literacy of it all. Yeah. Like to that, I think like, like, I don't know how to like pose this as a question. It's something to discuss. Like mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, the more profitable art fields, like things like, movies yeah. Yeah. producing yeah. or animation those things there's like a lot of gatekeeping because you're saying like there's less people of color in those mm -hmm. but not only that it's like that like they are kind of um they're kind of exploitative you know they like, are they, they can they be are. a little corrupt whereas yeah. the, a lot of people think start, it's a now that the internet thing. is now that the internet is yeah. out you're starting to find out a lot more about these people behind right. the scenes and Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, when when I was in animation class, we what we did, we was like we, we talked about the art part. Mm -hmm. The second part of the class is about the business side of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I never had that before because, like I said, I started out with my father. He was a you know he's an entrepreneur. He started doing his like I mean now he if you, if you see him as a photographer now compared to 1980 or whatever mm -hmm. it was totally different he's he's a lot more you got got the computer and stuff he's a lot more professional now right. but back then he got his clients just by you know doing good work and then somebody be like hey that's pretty good let me go hire that guy right you, you know it was like that but um when we talk about back to colorism and like the business side of it uh, I just learned his way just to hustle do it. And what some people would call the, you know, like a, just the hustle way. Right. You know, just get a client, get the money, get it back and all that stuff. But lately, um, when I, you know, I work with a video camera and stuff, I don't just do photography. Right. And it's a whole nother ball game because uh, my time, um, people don't know that like how they look on camera. Mm -hmm. Camera makes you a little darker, camera makes you a little wider. Because you got a screen, the, the, the regular camera might shoot you like this, the video camera might shoot you like a letterbox, so it's going to make you look a little wider. Right. Um, you got to look into the camera, you got to be confident. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff, like, people can tell, like, it, it, it comes out. You may not be able to see it, but it comes out, and it's an art form. Yeah. You know, you got to be aware. Sometimes you got to forget that camera's there and just go with it. That's when some people have their best performances, and they be like, okay... 
Don't get nervous and none of that stuff. It's just a box. Like, you know, right. <laughs> that's how I look at it. It's just a box I'm looking into, you know. But, right. Mm -hmm. And, like, also I feel like sometimes people can be um, convinced that something is more profitable than it actually is. Right. right? Like, a lot. So if, if we, <laughs> that's the thing, that's, like, also a reason I wanted to do this, uh, this show yeah. is to show that, like, we have all these people working in all these fields. Mm -hmm. They're all profitable in their own ways, but also there is you know, there is something you kind of have to sacrifice right. for it. Like, and so I feel like sometimes people will be like, oh, you know, animation is where the money is at, or oh, you know, videos and like photos are yeah. where the money is at. Or people will be, or even, you know, fine art is where the money is at, as opposed yeah. to selling, you know, your work at festivals, mm -hmm. this and that. But, and I was always, I was always the same way, like trying to figure out what's what, right. uh, where, what, what's the hotness, what's that, then another. But, me being 43 years old, I gotta say, now I may, I may think different in the next 10 years because right. my career has been like, the last two, three years, my career has been like taken off to crazy levels that I even think I could, I, I never thought I'd draw a big mural in the middle of the street. Now is the time for yeah, my Yeah, yeah, and I didn't. I didn't think a 22-year-old girl would be able to do to that. To do what you did, yeah. And it's like... That's <laughs> not real. Like, <laughs> but now, now that you've done it, it's like, man, what, what else can I do? You know? Yeah. I didn't <laughs> And, so I, and, I, and I just want to say, too, like, um, I know you're doing your video thing and just getting started. I've been doing this for about uh, 15, 16 years up there. Um, I just want to let everybody know out there, if you're watching this show and all this stuff, this stuff is work. Um, we plan this out. Um, you know, all, all this Hollywood stuff and all that. I've, I've, been, I've been a TV producer for almost 20 years. Um uh, all that stuff ain't what it's cracked up to be. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, uh, a, a lot of these people out here, these, these musicians and these celebrities and stuff like that, um, it's, it's a job. It's, it's a job to stand in front of the camera. It's a job to perform. Um, it's an art form. And it, it's a skill and it can be, it, it can be developed. But, but don't think that, you know, you're doing all this stuff and all, all this negative stuff trying to get internet famous. I don't think it's gonna get you nowhere because, you know, we, we're artists. We do this for a living. This is our passion, and a lot of people, you know, corrupting the game right now. Mm -hmm. They like, you know, we were talking about, you know, what what makes all the money to find art or now now a lot of people are, you know, getting into you know I want to do video games now because I see they you know. And I do think too that yeah. like also maybe it's not even just like assuming that. Um, like that people with a lot of followers are going to make a lot of money right yeah that's <laughs> that i know for a fact that's not true yeah yeah like I, i'm sorry mm -hmm. i i but i genuinely feel like sometimes uh and that also like if you're not making the money somebody else is making it for you mm -hmm. and that's another thing so if you're making no money off your art it doesn't mean that there's not being money made uh it's that like somebody else is making it so maybe yeah. those people are also struggling uh, with being exploited by whoever is yeah. like. And brand names, uh, brand yeah. names are important too. Um, yeah. I, I kind of built myself up a, a brand name over the years. Uh, it didn't happen overnight. I, I, I worked hard at it. I made sure that every every piece of artwork that I made for somebody that they were satisfied with it. You know, I, I try to get get it to them on a timely manner. Um, I never tried to rip nobody off for a piece of artwork, you know, I try to show integrity mm -hmm. and, and with that, you know, you keep doing that over the, over a certain amount of time, it kind of, I built myself up a name to where people can trust when they hire me and, get and your it, shit done on time. Yeah, get, get it done, <laughs> yeah, get it done on time, get it done right, um, make sure I over exceed what they expect. You know, I, I never tell people all what I can do. I just like, hey, you like this? Okay, well, I'm going to draw this for you or see this. And if you like it, I'll continue on. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure. And, and the same thing with my photography. Same thing with the videos. With all that stuff. But videos are always different because people often see themselves in a certain way. And they think the rest of the world will see them that way. And that's why a lot of people are insecure. That's why a lot of people are narcissistic. That's why a lot of people don't like to come out the house. And they have like whole social networks now. Yeah. That and <laughs> will be like, don't leave the house, girl. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> and now you got more of a, with social media and stuff like that, it's a double-edged sword because I've, 
I've had a lot of success with social media like that I, I wouldn't have had otherwise. And at the same time, it's brought me a lot of attention that I didn't want. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the that's the price of, you know, being on there. Yeah. You know, um, I get it. <laughs> but like, I, I just got on my Facebook and, and uh, MySpace and all that stuff. I just got on there to showcase my artwork and showcase my music. That, uh, and I made sure that that was my that was my goal. That was my intention. No matter how many years I'm on it, I'll always go back to that. Remember, you just saw here to do this. Right. Um, that's why you don't see me post a lot of. I don't post a lot of memes. Um, I kind of watch what I say on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you know, get a personal page. That's like yeah, really yeah, that. and. <laughs> and it, it's, it's stuff I need that to I, take my own advice. <laughs> yeah, and I, it's stuff that I'm passionate about. And when I see somebody talk about it, I might, you know, comment or, mm-hmm. you know, get into the conversation because, like lately, it's been these people. It's been these people ever since the Black Panther movie came out. Mm-hmm. It's, it's always these people that think they're expert on everything black, and I'm, I'm sitting up here arguing with somebody who never read a Black Panther comic book when I've been reading, reading it for 35 years. And I'm like, dude, just because you saw that movie, you know, mean you know what I know. Not even <laughs> just that. It's like I I recently got in a fight about Superman, and yeah. this dude was like, "No, Superman was this, but this and this." When like it started out, and I was like, "Actually, did you know Superman was like a response to Nazis?" Like right. literally, and like it started in 1935, like about being like American and not being a fascist dick. And like, right, yeah, you know, and, like, and you yeah. got to look back at, and, and like like I said, I study this stuff all the time, yeah. and, and when you look back at the times, they were responding to that stuff, you know, mm-hmm. the wars and all that stuff, and and if you really went look, look back, you will see how much of that stuff is still going on today, still relevant, mm-hmm. and, and you would think with all this information that we have, people would, you know, at least Google what you're talking about, but right. People get on there and run off at the mouth. I want attention. Um, you know, and it's, and it gets frustrating sometimes. But I try to, um, that's what I said, I try to just go back and focus on the art, try to speak through that. Um, a couple of people wanted me to do some political stuff recently. And, you know, hey, Joe, can you draw a picture of Donald Trump? And mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? For the right <laughs> price, I will do anything. Yeah. That's what and, I say. And, and people, a couple of people asked me, and I did, I did it for him. I, I knew the person. One one person was a journalist, mm-hmm. so I was like, okay, he's doing this for his article. He just want a picture with his article that he's writing, mm-hmm. and so I drew a picture of him. And instead of putting a American flag pin on his chest, on his chest, I put the Twitter logo <laughs> on his chest because I'm like, he no. he pretty much was on there more than he was helping us. Can you so, send us a picture of that? Yeah, I find okay. it. I find this thing. Yeah, but <laughs> that was one, and then I drew another one with um. I, I just didn't want to draw another George George Floyd picture. I'm like, everybody got one, right? So I drew one with him, and um, it was in black and white, and I just painted the American flag over his face, but I made it in the shape of his face. You know, just to, just to give it a little something different. And and I, and I just went with it there. I didn't, I didn't make no statement when I posted it. I just posted it. You know, you can take it however you want it. However you feel, let me know, though. Like, you know, I... I love negative and positive criticism. It helps me in both ways. I, I learn how to take it too. So <laughs> for me, it's like mm. if you don't agree with my subject matter, don't look at my art. Yeah. Like it, you can interpret it however you. I'm want. an artist, and I have like right. you gotta understand. <laughs> I have somewhat of an open mind. That's the only way I can be a real artist. Um, somebody with closed mind, you only go you only go get so far. So right. you know what I mean. <laughs> so I try, I just try to keep my mind open to all things. You know, cool. Real talk. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next question. I got up. you. Got three more. All right. You got three more. We're almost to the work. promised land. That'll work. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you see color affecting the black community? And and we kind of talked about this, but like, if so, in what way? And I mean, like, in every way. You mean like the colorism or just anything? No color. Like, color at all. Yeah, like we mm-hmm. can talk about colorism, yeah, but like. That's just one color. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Affected by yeah. Um. Well, yeah, definitely. I think um, I think in all our uh, there's you can't just say there's one black culture. There's uh, as you know, there's thousands of different black people. We all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different parts of the world. Um, we all have a shared experience, but we all have different experiences. You, you know what I'm saying? Like most of us have felt some type of discrimination or 
or somebody like you know have, having a opposition of to, to them mm -hmm. but I like to celebrate our differences and and we come from so many different backgrounds and when I when I did the one mural on the north side uh, right right over there right across the street from the Douglas we wanted to make sure that that was colorful because we wanted people to see the the colors of the neighborhood, the brightness of the neighborhood, the different flavors of the neighborhood, mm. you know, and that's why none of the words are, we didn't try to get all the words perfectly lined up. We just put the words up there, you know what I'm saying? We painted them however we felt at the time. And, and that's what the North side was to me. Yeah, it's a black, it's a black community, but, um, I talked to a few, few of the black people that first moved to that community in the 1920s or whatever. And they said they were forced to move on the north side. Right. So it wasn't the community we built. It was made for us. Mm -hmm. And we just took that and, you know, built our own little thing with it. But, yeah, when I first moved there, I lived on Western Street, right next to Murphy Darden. He was, um, he moved here from Mississippi. And he, he told me that. He said, they said he only could live on the north side if he lived in Kalamazoo. Right. And he only can go to stores on the north side because he's black. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he thought that only went on down south, and then he got up here and found out it was going on here too. I mean, it's and, been and it was a culture shock for him. Yeah. And um, and it was like that for me when I left Chicago. Uh, we left Chicago when I was young, but I was always back and forth because uh, my father still lived there. And that neighborhood on the west side, you know, they're pretty much neighborhood colors because that was the Chicago Bulls stadium was around the corner. Mm -hmm. So then with neighborhood colors, you know, the red and the black, it didn't just it extended outside that stadium. It went on to the street, uh, the kids' birthday cakes, everybody's shoes. Like, and this is stuff you don't see on the news, like the the impact of the neighborhood. Right. You know, and, and of course we know about L.A. with, you know. Oh, yeah. The, the colorism there. And then now mm. we're seeing, like, well, I mean, I know colorism, but, like, also uh, with the Buds and the Crips, like, they're coming together and, like, doing purple shit now. Like, yeah, yeah, they, like, yeah. You, you didn't, I didn't hear about that in the early 90s. Yeah. Like, yep. Or, like, the Bud and Crip Cola thing mm -hmm. from, um, uh, what's Killer Mike's, like, uh, show? Yep. Like, all these. The Cripple Cola and all that. But, yeah, so I feel like. But he had a point. Yeah. If the Hells Angels can make. Merchandise, we, you, can, you can buy their stuff at the Hard Rock Cafe. You can buy, right. they got coffee cups, then why can't we? You know, it's and the we're same better thing. At it. And that's the thing, like, we buy all this stuff. Black people, yeah. is we are excellent with color. Like, all the other communities are kind of jealous because, like, you see, like, white people don't, like, I, I understand that they can work with color, but, like, black people take color and put it to power. Like, we, we use it, like, almost they use it in advertising. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we see it differently. We, we, we see propagate it. For, it. Yeah, yeah, we see it for what it is. Yeah. And, like, we, we use it also as, like, a tribal connection. Exactly, um, yeah. I've noticed. And I, and I yeah. noticed that through different, um, well, I noticed that through our culture. And then I, I've also noticed that through, you know, like, even the Native American culture, um, some, some Mexican artwork, uh, some of the colors are more intricate. Um, they use a lot of oranges and a lot of, you know, bright colors on top of dark colors, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they use shapes, you know, different right. different shapes. Uh, a red square and a red circle go going to mean something totally different to different people. You, you know, if you put them next to each other, some person might be like, well, that's, you know, that looks like a sun and this looks like a building or... Somebody might be like, this looks like something else. Or, and it all it all depends on that person's experience, um, their experience with art, and their experience with visualizing colors. And colors um, can create emotion. Too. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And like the shape of something can almost change depending on what color it is. And the mood and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so the next mm -hmm. question is, um, mm -hmm. the, does colorism affect, we kind of talked about this too, but I wanted you to expand. Yeah. Does colorism affect how you conduct your business as a black artist? Now I'm talking about when you are getting work as a black artist, mm -hmm. do you, this can be internally or externally, okay. do you find yourself working differently with the expectations of colorism sometimes? And you can be honest. Like, yeah, um... Well, yeah, it was a couple projects um, I had. I was in a club one time, um, and she had a VIP area. Garage door came down. She wanted me to paint um, some, you know, past artists, artists who passed away. And I was like, okay. And she's like, well, I want you to come up with the artist. 
<laughs> and I'm like, okay, now we're dealing with a whole other part. This is music we're talking about. It's a whole other part of art. I have my heroes. You might have a whole other set of heroes than right. I do. So what do you want me to put up here? And I showed her a pic. I said, okay, I'm going to go off what I what I love. These, and this is when Tupac, uh, I was like, okay, we'll do Tupac. And the left Eye. Um, who, who else died? Aaliyah, Jam After J. I did Michael Jackson had just passed away. And I was like, I'm definitely putting Michael up here. And uh, I put, um, and I put those people up there. And I was like, um, and she, she didn't have a, she didn't have a problem with it, but she was like, can you put like some, you know, mix it up a little bit, um, put some artists of different races up here, you know, on the wall. And I didn't know, I didn't know how to take it. (laughs) Basically, yeah. I've had exactly, I gotta share this with you real quick. She's crazy. She's Mm -hmm. just acting crazy like you, she's just a baby. But, but that was one instance, you know. I had exactly the same experience because I created a children's book for a white woman up north who wanted to do a book on the 19th amendment. Okay. And she was like, but I want it to be inclusive. And every time I put black feminists in there, or, like, a black character besides the main character, she was like, that just doesn't fit with it. And basically, it ended up where I was contractually obligated to take all the black people out of the book. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow. For real. (laughs) Yeah. So, (laughs) and you know, things like, and I I didn't have a problem with it. It was just like, now I told you in the beginning, we had different heroes, and, Mm and and she kind of she kind of came at me like you know why well, I didn't know how to how to ask you that, and I'm like I'm like I'm I said when it comes to music I I listen to everything too like I all of my favorite artists aren't just black they just happen to be that was what I was first exposed to mm-hmm. that's what I'm always gonna be exposed to. And that's it's yeah. not wrong to prioritize yeah. your culture first. Right. And so one one wall I put I did pink on one of her walls. Mm-hmm. I did Elton John on the other one. Mm-hmm. I did. Um, I did like the Beatles Temptations. I do like I did all that stuff, and I mean she ended up it ended up being cool. But then like what two three months later they changed it to a sports bar and I had to take it down. So <laughs> like, yeah, so wow. yeah, and so now I'm working on. Do you have pictures of it though? Yeah, I got a lot of pictures of everything. Okay. But see, right now with the you know with with the group that I'm in with Nicole. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be working. They want me to do something else musical for a wall. Um, and now I went back to that. I was like, yeah. okay, I still got these transparencies where I can just, you know, put them on the, put them on the thing. get shot them on the wall. I can draw it all over again. I still got all the transparency of the people. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, now, this is a, this is a, um, a junior high school. So I know they're going to want me to put different people up here. So right. before they even ask me. I'm gonna, put, <laughs> I'm gonna put these these five black people or whatever. Then I'm gonna mix it up and put Carlos Santana, uh, nice. Elton John, and Kenny G up here. Cause I ain't just gonna put regular white people. I'm gonna put the cool white people. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put the white people I listen to. Right. I don't know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Kenny G. Cause my mother when I was going to Hillside, that's what my mother used to listen to every morning. So we'll put that up there for her. And then um, she the one told me. Hey, I don't care about Elton John being gay. That dude, can, I, I thought he was black for a long time until I seen him on Soul Train. So it was like, I, I, I got to put him up there because mm-hmm. for a long time I thought he was black. The way he sung, the way he played. <laughs> then I seen him on Soul Train. I'm like, that's a white dude. Like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people have that experience. Yeah, that so and that's another thing too. He um, and he was a big fan of Soul Train. He was like, you ain't made it in the business till you got on this show, and that was an all black show. That he was trying to get on. Nice. You, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't about the color. It was just about who was the dopest. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's what I love about, you know, colorism. That, that's why I try to use a lot of um, a lot of colors that I don't see. Mm-hmm. A lot of browns, grays, dark browns, my, uh, yeah. people of my complexion. So I start putting that stuff out there. I think you know? um, I'm more asking about colorism in the... And I mean, this is also... All of that was like wonderful and all that it's going to be like important. But also, mm-hmm. um, like, I mean, do you think that like gigs are prioritized to people if they're lighter? And I mean, I mean, like, within I would, um, I ask myself that question a few times. community, if it is, it like you know, and we can talk about I've this. seen, um, I've seen it, yeah, I've seen it before, um, 
I've seen it not not just with making murals though. I'm talking right. about with um, writing children's books, um, being an author of children's books, mm -hmm. and you know how you got to put the picture in the back. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people like, oh, well, I'm gonna take a black and white picture so I don't look so dark. And I'm like, um, <laughs> really? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I like, um, I ain't got no problem looking dark. I ain't got no problem being black. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know, and I, I've seen it before, and I've seen. Um, I've heard of like publishers telling people of color not to put their not to put their photo on the back or or, or to change their name, um, not let people know that they're like don't tell people you're African and Mexican or don't tell people about your Mexican side or it, it, I, I've heard a lot of that stuff go on and <laughs> you won't believe some of the stuff I heard and e even with not just that like with the um this, this type of art form with the camera. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Um, if a if a if a big girl is a, a big girl of color, mm -hmm. they'll try to put her in the background or something like that. But if it's a big white girl, they'll still discriminate, but just in a different way. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and and it's different forms of discrimination, but it always seems like it comes back to we get the brunt of it. Right. So <laughs> so people and, and, and when some people don't understand that. Like they. Yeah. You know, I'm not just being paranoid. Like, mm -hmm. I know you've been to a restaurant sometime and you're the only black person in the group and they'll ask you if you want the hot sauce. Like, just mm -hmm. little stuff like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> that just happened to me in Atlanta not too, not too long ago. I was with two white boys and he looked at me and asked me, did I want the hot sauce? And I'm like, I'm like, nah. I want the hot sauce. Yeah. Like, <laughs> My I did, sauce. yeah. I, I did want some, but now <laughs> I'm like, nah, no, nah, I'm straight <laughs> down. Yeah, I'm straight down. But yeah, I, I've seen it, but um, as, as far as it happening to me, um, it was a couple instances where I got called to a gig by, you know, a friend recommended me, hey, Gerald, go to this place, holler at this guy, um, he wants a mural done, talk to him. Um, I, and a couple times I went in there and dude, you know, dude didn't know I was black and kind of got, you know, you kind of got the, oh, like the, shaky shake. yeah, like the, oh, <laughs> but, but recently, I've had that happen. Yeah, recently a lot of people have been seeing my work. Um, you know, the Black Lives Matter mural downtown, um, the billboard, I mean, the, the wall on Dickman, um, some of the businesses I've done, all the work I've done at the Douglas, the, the Black Panther um, whole exhibit, I did that. Now that people kind of like, I let my work speak for me. Like, hey, I, if I've done all this and, you know, I, I actually get checks from this and, mm -hmm. you know, I got, I got people that can vouch for me. And all that stuff, it kind of speaks for me. So, so now it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's a great artist. He just so happens to be black. Like, so, and as a person, yeah. you know, like younger than you, mm -hmm. who's like starting out in the field, I gotta say that is like one of the most frustrating things when you're either when you're starting out or when you're doing it. And don't let me get started. Or when black you're women. successful. <laughs> black women too. Exactly. Oh, man. Black. And and like all those things when you're successful and or mm -hmm. you're doing the work and you're trying to prove to people, yes, I can do the work. That's like it's frustrating when you're like um, when you're judged. Like I I've had this experience. I was talking about this on Facebook the other day. I was like. I, if I hear one more guy say, oh, I didn't know you were an artist artist. I didn't know, yeah. you, were, I didn't know you get paid to <laughs> Don't do you this. Hate that? I didn't know, like, the, yes. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah, oh right. I, it's my only job. When they got that, oh, well, what's your real job? I'm like, right? this? <laughs> it's like, this is my job. Yeah, this is like, my job. This is what I do. Yeah, so, yeah. like, yeah. Because people come to me and like, well, what do you do for a living? And that's the, to anybody else, it's like, hey, I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. Mm -hmm. and I gotta sit up there and be like, okay, what do I tell this person? Right. I, I do murals and and I do photography and I and I'm like, I'll be all day explaining all this shit. Right. I just say I'm an artist and in every sense, mm -hmm. I, I I probably dabbed in it, but I mean I'm a professional at all of this because I got to check from doing this, I got to check right. from drawing the picture, I got to check for a sketch. And you know, what I'm and you have to plan it. It's not yeah. only that you're an artist, you're a manager, you're a business owner, and mm -hmm. you're the worker. So you're three jobs in one, and you're hustling those consistently. Consistently, all the time, yeah. and there's no, um, there's no cookie cutter sheet to being an artist. Mm -mm. I think every artist has a different experience, like everyone. Like we all come from different backgrounds, um, but it seems like we all been told that hey, this ain't a real job. Um, you should be like, especially not ashamed of it, but like yeah, yeah. Like I feel like a <laughs> 
friends and their girlfriends, and they're like, oh, oh, that's the worst. You should really just work a real job. I mean, you're always so broke, and you're like, but I'm trying to And you know what I did when I worked a real job? I went on my lunch break. And drew the shit out of everything that I want because I hated that job. And then you made more money <laughs> off of those sketches than yep. you ever would at that nine to five. My last That's job, true. my last job, what a year and a half ago at Family Fair, I was stocking shelves on third shift mm -hmm. because that was only like I was like, okay, I can get up at midnight and work till four o'clock in the morning. That ain't nothing. Right. Ain't three four hours, but then by the three four hours that you do need sleep, yeah. and the whole time I'm working and I'm stocking them shelves, I'm like. I could be drawing some shit right now, and when I get home, I'm gonna draw like I, I'm gonna. I ain't gonna stop if right. I hate this job and I don't want it no more. And I was getting the dollars, uh, no, 175 a week at that job, and I was like, this ain't shit. It ain't paying my bills. It ain't helping me, and I ain't getting rich. So, <laughs> and I, it actually was like it was keeping me further in debt because it was stopping me from drawing shit. Mm -hmm. And so, and one day it, it just happened. I got a thousand dollar check. From a sketch I drew, but it it was a it was a regular old sketch, just a design a design layout. We all got that moment. Yeah, it was a design layout for a plan to build something else. Mm -hmm. And I did that sketch, and I got like a thousand dollar check. And I'm like, I'm sitting up here making one hundred seventy five a week. And I'm yes. like, hey, I quit. <laughs> that was my exact yeah. experience. I was like basically homeless, like. A year and a half when I moved to Kalamazoo. Oh, I didn't, I, know I didn't that. have yeah. nowhere to live. I was couch surfing everywhere. And um, I was working terrible little shitty restaurant jobs trying to make my money, making like $5 an hour on average. Right, right. And then um, there was this open call for proposals to a graphic novel. And okay. I applied to it. And I sent my proposal in on time. I was the only one to get on time. So this is one of those things where if you're yeah. punctual, you can actually make money above other people mm -hmm. and then and then I ended up getting like a six figure deal or yeah and like just like See? And my money or, like, and, and four, you can't you can't plan it you deal, can't plan this stuff pretty good you can't plan being, this like, stuff you just got to put yourself in a position to and sometimes you got to jump like I'm like I don't know how to draw none of this stuff but I'll learn I'll, I'll learn figure it out. <laughs> I will figure it out I will google I will I will go to the library I will figure it out yeah. straight up and then, like, mm -hmm. the resi like, and the book's not even out yet. I'm mm -hmm. starting all this stuff. I'm doing stuff with you guys. And it really does take quitting your shit job and not knowing where your money's going to yeah. go. <laughs> like, and it was my art teacher that told me this. It was, like, I was working at Walmart at the time, and I had just I had just got my wife pregnant, and I was, like, I wanted to go to school and all this, but I was a manager up here. They were supposed to be helping me pay for it, but they, um... It was some discrimination thing going on because they, me being a full-time employee, they were supposed to be paying for that. I had to pay for all that out of my pocket. And so when they found out I was about to file a lawsuit and all that stuff, they started giving me a hard time at the job. And I was like, you know what? I don't even like working here. I don't yeah. like money. And I had just got back from New Orleans too. And so it was like, I, I was liberated. And yeah. the money, they are making the money off of you. Yeah. And that's a real thing. So trying like to keep me from working, working for, they try to keep me from working over 40 hours. Right, yeah. and if we're making this much money off of our art, mm -hmm. they were making this much money or more off of our cheap labor. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. that's slavery, and like yeah. they put black people in this position still to this day, and we we are more valuable than that. So, so I just start. I mean, <laughs> but I, I start looking at different people and like different artists, and um, a lot of the artists like because success ain't always about the money you make. It's a, it's a, I think it's about. Um, the intent of the artwork and you getting you reaching that intention and everybody seeing what your intention was with with the art that you're doing whether it's whether it's making animation video um paintings or whatever you know and then people are going to have their opinions about your work that's like mm -hmm. like you put it out there to be criticized mm -hmm. um a graphic designer is the second biggest industry but the people who actually do it are the poorest and it's, it's like do that make sense? Like, it's the car industry, then it's a graphic designer. money off of mm -hmm. those people, though. It doesn't mean that the right. money isn't there. It means that the money somebody, is being played. Right. Now, think about it. When you make a car, somebody got to design that car first. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yep. And now, then somebody told that person that their card was worth 50 bucks or something. Right. And think this, about that. They're making 50 bucks off of that, and then, like, 
the person who's producing it, mass producing it, is making millions. Millions off that, and you just and you designed it, you put it together, you this did all this. This happened to me once. I made a little meme thing when I was like seven, like on my paint, and then it went viral. And like a oh, lot of people yeah. ended up making money off of it, but I didn't know. T shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Exactly. Yep. Okay, you can go to your question. Final question. All right. Okay, so um, what is privilege and what does it mean to you? Because I think that the color. Privilege? The like when you think of the word? Yeah. Privilege? Because I think Woo! privilege <laughs> can affect, and we can talk about color privilege too, mm -hmm. but I feel like privilege affects your views of color. Privilege affects the like it, it's affected by the color you are, mm -hmm. um, and also privilege can be assigned to colors too. So like there's different colors that are considered more elegant or more like uh, elitist than others. Yeah, you know? I know. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, well, let's see. I'm gonna go back to one. I'm gonna go back a little bit when I like I said when I was growing up and talking about privilege. Um, I noticed when I was watching a lot of the, a lot of my favorite cartoons and stuff, that's what I used to, um, that was my reference for drawing. I used to pause, I used to record a show, pause the VCR tape, and then just draw whatever was on the screen. Mm -hmm. And, um, people are like, you can't do that. I'm like, well, somebody else drew it. I can draw it. So <laughs> they drew it to put it on here. So, um, I noticed that a lot of the, uh, the bad guys all were dark, mm -hmm. dark colors. They used a black guy for the voice. Darth Vader, he's a white guy in the movie, but the black man was his voice. Even right. even, even today, the God of War, the video game. Yes. He's an evil Greek dude, but the black guy is his voice. You see what I'm saying? The so you listen to a black guy. Yeah. Even. He's like reminding you of car accidents by being like and a, he's a voice black actor. guy. Yeah. 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 So I was like, I noticed that, and then I'm like, um, I'm like, why? Why is he the voice and not the character? Why don't he just be the character? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I noticed that stuff. And people used to tell me with my voice, like I should be a, a voice actor and play the devil and, and, and all of this. And and I'm like, no, the devils in my neighborhood look like this. Like, it's, it's, it's like, it's opposite of what I'm seeing on TV. And, and I noticed that. And, and then I, I noticed the reverse, too. Like, at one point, it's like the people start rooting the bad guy in the movie. And so then they reversed it. Okay, now, now Batman is wearing all black. But in the in the comic book, you know, he had the blue and the gray and all that. But when the movie, he all wearing black mm -hmm. at nighttime. And ooh, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's mysterious. It is. It's, it's it's almost sexy to them now. You know, it's like <laughs> you know, look, I'm wearing all black now because it's just that's how I do. That's how I roll. But you know, and um, and I noticed like with uh, with the sports teams too. Like Chicago's a big sports city. Um, you know, like this, it, it's it's serious. Like it's it's people up there will not wear green and yellow because they hate Green Bay. Mm -hmm. um, it's a guy that got fired for wearing a Green Bay tape tied to work. Uh, <laughs> like straight, this is a true story. He got oh, up. I believe because yeah. Illinois people be tripping. Like you ever seen like Ohio State and people won't wear red, they won't wear green during Michigan State. Like that stuff is serious. Like people. <laughs> And these same people was like, back in the 90s, they were talking, you know, Bloods and Crips, and that's dumb, you fighting over colors, woo woo. Look at, look at right now, 2020, all this Democrat, Republican, red, and blue states, they doing the exact same stuff. And they a lot more dangerous because they think they're patriotic in doing it. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? And like, I think also, what's mm -hmm. so wrong with applying color to power? Or power yeah, we, we do it subconsciously anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, as long yeah. as it's like, well, I mean, for me, I think anything as long as it's not killing somebody. But mm -hmm. also, like, you know, power, like, black. You're wearing the black uh, Voters Matter shirt. Mm -hmm. Like, the Black Panthers were black. Like, it was, it's a uniform color assignment to us as a people and our liberation. And it's a solidarity. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a color... Because it's not a color. Some it, right. it, it's a it's the absence of everything. Right. It's an emptiness. It's a oh you know it's like a. I I think of it as like a new beginning, a genesis. Like mm -hmm. anything can happen now. You, you know it's, it's fair game. Yeah. But it's people out there that benefit from us being on our back. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and so, yeah. 
of course they when I went to school um when I was in high school they tried to ban they, t they told us we can't wear Raiders we can't wear Raiders clothes and hats um and these are sports teams and I'm like well I'm from Chicago and you know the White Sox they wear the same color as the Raiders you know why you know why, why can't we wear this and not that and then one of my friends from LA said they couldn't wear White Sox stuff to school but they could wear Raiders stuff so now I know it wasn't about the, it wasn't just about the color. It was about where we were, where we from, the socialism, and, you know, um, racism is just one form of discrimination. That's the stuff we can see and we deal with every day. But it's other little stuff. It's um, you black and you're a woman. You black and you short. You black short and a woman. You black fat and a man. And it, it, all that stuff. Like people, like yeah, people will, um, people will treat you differently. Like mm -hmm. it's, I took a lot of, um, when I was taking animation, I had to take um, some some human courses like uh, sociology, and I took uh, intro to psychology because I want to study people, like the way people think, and I wasn't gonna you ain't gonna never know a person, but I want to study the way people thought patterns go, especially in our society because we real um, we live in a society where greed is is uh, looked at as success, or mm -hmm. success is looked at as it's measured. But like how much you have. Your money and being in people's face. How Instead famous of you how are. Happy you yeah. Are, or content you are with and, what and, you do have. And I, I've known a lot of people. Um, a lot of my artist friends went to Hollywood. I'll tell you right now. Um, I know a lot, few of my friends went to work at Disney. Uh, one of my friends worked at Pixar. Um, one of my friends worked at uh, Paramount. And like four of them worked at Warner Brothers. Um, only one of them was happy. Real talk. Um, the girl that worked at Pixar, she wasn't an animator. She made the boxes for Cars 2 to put the toys in. She designed the box. It was a good job. It was on her resume, but having Pixar on her resume got her other job. Mm -hmm. um, but she wasn't happy working there because, guess what? She thought, oh, you can work in here? Oh, you're an animator. Nope. You don't, you don't just get to do, get, walk up in there like that. No, you got to work your way up to... You gotta work your way up to the top. There's people have been there before you, and and then don't don't let me get started on the discrimination, the mm -hmm. the bias. This this person might have went to school with this person. They want them at the top, and you just somebody that came from, you know. So and, it's not based on merit at all. Yeah, and you we we think the world is fair, like, but it's really um it's really just you gotta face reality sometimes. And then sometimes you gotta your fantasy will get you out of situations, you know. <laughs> and and as artists, sometimes we don't know that balance. Um, I had a, I had a hard time with uh, like balancing the finance with my art because you can't really put a price tag on my passion, my my artwork. Um, I sold stuff for a dollar. I sold stuff for a thousand dollars. The passion that went into both into both of the artwork was the same though. Um, it all depends on the situation. Some people, some people got the money to spend. Some people just, hey, I just want a picture for an article, you know. <laughs> and, and I try to accommodate all that, and I try to think of other people's situations too, and what, you know why they want the artwork or they, you know, kids' birthday party. I know it's gonna mean a lot to a kid, you know. Um, I've drawn some stuff, and I've drawn a lot of stuff, and, and I'm like, in my in my black page, my group, and all that stuff. I always felt like I couldn't put it on there because I drew a picture of a white character or I drew a picture of this and and it was like I always seemed limited. That's why I don't join a lot of groups. Mm -hmm. um, I like start. I, I kind of started my own group about diversity. Like yeah. you can draw whatever the fuck you want to. Mm -hmm. Just just don't be in here trying to just you know don't oh, be in here like trying to bully people. Groups, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't be in here trying to bully people. Right. And um and like I, I joined one black group and it was like they weren't helping nobody. Like it's, I joined one group that yeah. was exactly like that. It was I joined a black art group and a black reparations group. But uh -huh. the art group was like you were supposed to put your you wouldn't get your shit put up unless it was like your name, the name of the art, how much the art is, where you're based, yeah. where you can find it. And it's like at that point it's like how where's the mystery in this? Yeah, and, and so and one of them it was just like I thought it was it was just like the administrators seemed like they were um they were like just people that were power hungry. Like they Picking just, and choosing. Yeah, yeah that's and, a thing too. And I put a picture up one time 
And she said something about what does this have to do with black art? And I'm like, I don't have to explain to you. You're what. black and you're an artist. Yeah, I'm like, I'm black and I made it. And I'm like, this yeah. is, it was something I won an award for in college. And so I'm like, um, I made it. That's where it's not <laughs> yeah. about you. It's about them. Yeah, like, and I'm just like, yeah. um, I was just like, hey, you kind of crossing the line because you're telling me what to draw. Yeah, and, and that's also, that's a no no, right? <laughs> so, like, I'm like, I don't let my mom do that. So it's like, if you don't like something, you can be, you can say, you can criticize and say, hey, I, I don't like this type of work or whatever. You can let me know. I don't care. But but that doesn't define your blackness. When right. we define each other's blackness, that's when we've crossed the line that's, because and, only God can define yeah. my blackness. Like I, said, we, like I said, we come in all shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. We all, like, every form of society, Chinese, black, is black people somewhere in that line or circle or that, that, that happen to be there. It's it just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like that through history. Um, I study history outside of America because it's a lot more vast. It's a lot more real. Mm -hmm. This this history is uh, focused on the European. You're going to learn about more Europeans in school, not your own history. Yeah, and colonization, all that. And I just once I started learning other stuff, like I said, it all affects my artwork. I put it all in there, everything I know about it, you know, or or my understanding of it. You know, and it's always going to be stuff we don't know. Mm -hmm. That's what makes this shit fun. <laughs> you know, all right. Exactly. Okay, well, is there anything else you want to say about color or just to, you know, the artists who are going to be watching this? Yeah. Well, like I said, um, I like to use dark colors. I like to draw people that look like me. Um, I feel like growing up, I was always misrepresented. Uh, you know, people like me that that it was dark as me was always a bad guy, or in the movies, or or the evil voice in the cartoon, or stuff like that. And I just wanted to expand. Like, I mean, once I saw that movie, like uh, Blade, where Wesley Snipes was the the lead actors, and that was the first Marvel movie that you know made all that money. And, and you see every every damn summer, it's another Marvel movie making a million dollars, but that was the first one, and it was like. It was, a, it was a black guy from the comic books that people kind of forgot about until, until Wesley Snipes brought him back. And, and this one's Spider-Man. This wasn't, this wasn't a big name franchise. This was just a guy who, he just so happened to appear in a Spider-Man comic book. And then once he did that movie, Wesley, Wesley touched him up a little bit, you know, with the trench coat, you know, hooked it up, you know. But it was a successful movie. And they ended up doing three more. And now you're getting all these comic book movies. And... And then if Black Panther comes out and that's what a billion dollars in one weekend. Like, ain't nobody ever did that before, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he and he's been a successful comic book for what, since I was well, since I was born, because he came out in seventy seven with his first one. And I was born in seventy seven, so he is as old as me. So <laughs> and I used to read that comic book a lot because it was something positive about Africa. I never like on commercials and stuff like that, I never seen them positive. So it was like and he had an all black suit on, he, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's badass. Like he's from this city that was, was so advanced that he didn't have to leave because everywhere else seemed poor, <laughs> you know? And, and, and they used to, the, the guys used to draw the pictures and they used to draw Africa with technology. And, and I, I love looking at all that. And then like when I saw that movie, I actually seen this place move. I actually seen that, you know, I've been looking at pictures for years. You know, little pictures of them. Now I can see, I hear these people talking. They got accents and the different clothes and all that stuff. And I was just like, like wow, like they, they finally did it. And I've been telling people for years, if that ever got made into a movie, it's going to be big. And if people always, oh, no, nah, I didn't, you know. And I proved everybody wrong. And, <laughs> and like and so I said, the use dark colors. <laughs> right. God loves dark colors. And, make, and plus, it, if you put on jewelry, it makes it shine brighter when you're dark, so... There you go. Lesson one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, also, um, mm -hmm. tell the camera and me where, uh, where to find your work. And, okay. Um, you know, how you to can find my work all over Kalamazoo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you can find my work. Um, Rip Taco. Yeah. <laughs> you can find my work on, um, I'm on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Um, check out my pages. Uh, one is King Photography. One is Throw TV. That's all my um, that's all my artwork that I put on my television show, 
and my other page is uh, TTV Art Zone, and excuse me, that is my latest one. Um, that's my show where you see a lot of the, the stuff I put on Facebook with the speed drawings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where I actually slow it down and I show you <laughs> how I draw it because I, I actually don't draw it really that fast. Um, sometimes I do. Sometimes I be going like that. Uh, <laughs> or it seems like it. But, but yeah. Um, and I want to encourage people during this pandemic. If you haven't before, I know some of y'all going to say, but read more comic books. Um, matter of fact, go back to reading stuff. Go if, read novels, comic books, graphic novels, all that. Read, read all that stuff because it'll keep you from being, getting cabin fever. Um, there's a lot of interesting stories out there. Now that we, now that we are in 2020, everything ain't about uh, superheroes and stuff like that. They got comic books that are about, um, you know, regular people, romance, um, you know, uh, police brutality, violence, um, how to how to come up out of your neighborhood, teenage pregnancy, uh, teenage, uh, just teenage drug use. All, like it's, it's it's stuff about all that stuff and. And then they're cheap. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them. Um, and we might not be able to go to movies for a minute, so just find different ways to entertain yourself. You know, it's a lot of different ways. Be creative. Get get back to drawing. Get back to doing that stuff you did in the second, third grade. You know, where people told you to stop because you weren't making no money. Get back to doing it. You know, now is the time. So that's it. That's all I say. Awesome. All right. All right. So. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to give you right some info. Good deal. <laughs> awesome. But it didn't hold you up too much. Right. Um, I didn't record a lot of it. Y'all record a little bit of it. Good deal. So I can uh, take it to the TV station. Well, actually, I don't got to go there no more. I just got to take this camera equipment back. All right. Welcome to activity two. As you can see, I already have part of it done. Um, what you're going to need is a paint knife. All the colors of the rainbow. A rag and the thing that you can create on. Now I did a different uh, shape of panel than in the time lapse and changing up your uh, canvas shapes and panels and sizes can also like make your art a little bit more interesting and create like space and form. We're gonna be talking a lot about space and form next time. Um, so like you can probably see I'm just randomly putting on globs of uh, the colors of the rainbow in order and actually what I'm doing is I'm shifting the piece every single time that I'm adding a glob and kind of randomly putting it in different directions so this is another way that you can create art you don't necessarily have to be good at making uh, forms to be good at making art you can just create abstract colors, um, really play around with textures, with what feels right. So maybe talking about like this piece may not look, you know, very well thought up, but it felt very right. I did it again. I'm just going to continue. Um, you can use some of the audio from this. I'm just messing up with the audio over and over. So I'm just going to continue. Alright, so um, our next color that we're using is, we went to yellow, so I might add a little bit more yellow actually. And then we're going to go to green. And if it falls like you didn't plan on it falling, just let it happen. See what happens. Flip it over. And if you put these colors next to each other, it almost is like the harmony, but it's an abstract harmony. Um, so it's not necessarily in scientific electromagnetic order <coughs> necessarily. I'm 
make sure that you're getting your palette knife a little wet for where you're wiping it down. <clears throat> okay. Switch ends. Then we're going to go into the blue. And think if you, if these colors of the rainbows aren't enough, think about split complementaries. Think about analogous color schemes. Think about monochromatic color schemes that you could do the same project with. You could really use this with any color harmony and make a really beautiful abstract piece of art. And eventually, even if you do use these colors of the rainbow, you start to point out the in-betweens and you start to see like where they overlap oh well that's blue green that's you know uh, red purple you know and you may not even mean for that to happen and like I say all the time if you mess up it's not a mess up it's just an opportunity so just let it be look at it and then think about how you want to add on to it but honestly I never I never, like, take out anything that I think is a mistake about my work. And yes, even now, make sure you're painting the sides. Make sure you paint the sides of your portrait. Or your portrait, your panel. Because painting the sides of your panel makes it look more complete. No matter what. It always does. It's just facts. sides a little. The sides are as important as any other part of the canvas. And then we go back to red. Kind of like it's a song, kind of like a harmony. Like you're going back to the color that you started with. And then moving on into the next part of the song. So decide what your song is. Decide what your pattern is. <clears throat> Can you go over a color? Do you want to see more of a color on the side of your panel? Oh yeah, do you want to make a little dash with your with your color? The little dashes. You know, like just make it imperfect. <clears throat> And um, yeah, like in Create with Maya, we're going to be fo as focused on art that is um, imperfect or abstract art as much as art that is perfect. But really, perfection is not my goal with this show. It's just enlightening people's creative spirit. What can you do today that like you've never done before, you know? So I'm going to get more orange might be almost out of orange. Expect to lose a lot of paint off of this uh, project, so if you're not ready to lose a lot of paint, maybe this kind of a project isn't what you're looking for right now. Or, in the opposite end, if you are looking for kind of paint that, <clears throat> a kind of painting style that will work for you <clears throat> and you have a large amount of paint and you don't know what to do with it, this is something you could start to do. Just paint knife painting. And some people 
use paint knives to like create entire like visual displays like to create entire <clears throat> realistic paintings but it's still abstract because you're using a paint knife more yellow mm -mm. and this is the part where you could add split complementaries complementaries um, analogous colors um, or you could use um, some neutrals <clears throat> you could use some bright colors some neons if you wanted there's really a lot you could do with this project Yeah, even practice, like have fun with like maybe press your paint knife and it creates a shape. You know, there's so much you can do uh, rather than like exactly what I'm doing. You know, just play around with your paint knife. See the shapes that it makes. See how the colors blend. See if you like it. <clears throat> a little more yellow because we're aiming to finish this piece, right? Like, we aim for finishing. We don't aim for perfection, we just aim to finish. Yeah, see the lines that can create, though? can create some pretty cool lines. Bob Ross liked to take the side of his uh, paint knife and create mountains. You could do that. See that? There's so much you can do. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make a mountainscape. So if you see something start to take form, do it. You know, but otherwise you can just go do your um your basic paint knife. Fun, you know. Just have fun. Add more colors. Whatever. Whatever works for you. See how that's almost like a mountainscape. Moving on to the next color. So we did yellow. Next color is green. We've still got some green left. Mm. And like I said, keep rotating the page. Even if you see an image, keep rotating the page. See what you uh, can create that's not in that image. Make sure you get the sides, so if the sides are lacking, make sure you can get parts of the sides. More blue! expand on that mountainscape.
definitely more complex than the time lapse, but the time lapse should go before this just to get the gist of it. <laughs> But this is turning out to be a lot cooler. Let's be real. Um, purple. Purple, purple, purple. I'm going to take this piece, flip it over two more times. Two more times. I'm going to take some different kind of colors, like I said you could do. So I'm going to take this uh, different tone of purple. <clears throat> and I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it on the sides maybe. Get it up the mountainscape a little bit. You can also use the sides to clean off the palette knife and it still creates art for you. So it's like multitasking, right? And I always like want to create some sort of multitasking within my art because I know that then I can achieve like something more, you know? So you're maybe, um, and think about this like for opportunities too. <clears throat> Anything that's meant for you will find you. Anything. So if it's not for you, it will miss you. Think about it that way. If it's not for you, it will miss you. So art is an opportunity to create something that's for you, always. If you're doing it, it's for you. If you're not, it will miss you. And it's not meant for you, but multitasking can create like lots of opportunities in art. When God closes a door, he opens a window, right? They open a window, she opened a window. You know what I'm saying. What if we had a pink, a pink color? Just a little. This makes me think of when I was going through the mountains. <clears throat> on road trips, multiple road trips. I'm going by the mountains on multiple road trips. All right, I'm gonna do one more color. Different red, how about that? Go back.
And there you have it. So you can see the depth, you can see the layers, you can see the time that it took, but it only took, what, 20 minutes to create? Um, so this is going to be your treated ground also. So let it dry for at least 5 to 10 hours. I would just let it dry overnight. And then you can go over it, add drawings, add details, add collages. Um, see what you can make out of this because this is so much more than just what you did. And if it's fine and you love it, and you think it's perfect, and you want to keep it, then you keep it, and become a paint knife painter, um, and work with colors, and have fun with colors, and experience colors, because they're so valuable. Um, all right, wonderful. Uh, so yes, I'm Maya. This is uh, Create with Maya. <clears throat> and this was our color activities. We have our tie-dye circle that you can do anything you want over. You can create collages over it, you can paint over it, you can do your self-portrait, or you can just leave it as is. And we got our paint knife painting, our magnificent paint knife painting, and it is so detailed.